But okay, so I want to dive into this because obviously I could chat with you about just life all day, but uh, I want to get into the nitty gritty of what you're actually doing. So we have the, obviously this cultural problem where these foods are cemented in American culture as the norm. And that's, I want to get into why the change that is happening, what the change that you're creating really, um, sort of has to start at the private school level. So I talked to Rob Wolf about this on my podcast with him. And he explained that like the same organization that's in charge of the prison food program is in charge of the school lunch program and there's politicians and there's lobbyists and this and that. And it's just, he's basically like, don't hold your breath on changing the public school system. So what we need to do is lead by example and show what can be done. So if you take your lunch program that you have designed, what would you like to see happen with the rest of the U S like, how does this actually become feasible? Well, I, I really feel strongly that I cannot go like, you know, we've spent a lot of time talking with schools across the country and there's all sorts of hurdles from like, we don't have an oven or we don't have a kitchen or we need to replace this or we don't have, you know, and so those problems I can't go in and solve for everybody. But what we can do is I can train lunch leaders. So my mission is really to train a new wave of lunch leaders. We're naming them lunch leaders because I have, three men that work in my kitchen and I'm like, are you a lunch lad, a lunch Lord? Like, what are you? <laughs> so I thought lunch leaders is perfect, but to train a new wave of lunch leaders to sweep across the nation, infiltrate the school systems and communities and disrupt the trend of chronic illness in this next generation of kids. So with training them, you're again, you we've got this model that we know can be replicated. And it really, it's like creating a new job in the marketplace. Like I think it's really difficult to, um, nothing against the current lunch ladies that are showing up and cooking because they're doing the best they can with the resources they have. Mm -hmm. But I think we need to create a vibe and an excitement that, um, that this is a cool opportunity. You can graduate from culinary school or IIN or NTA or um, you know, which are health related programs, uh, and, and be a lunch leader. It's like running your own restaurant with like a really cute clientele, you know, and you're getting this <laughs> opportunity to really change people's habits and to really make an impact. And so it's, it's super exciting. So I think that the, I just see it. I really see it unfolding. And we've had people really interested. We're doing this lunch leader training Academy now, but we've had people interested from, people who are starting a preschool, people who are in a, the restaurant business who want to shift out of what they've been doing and get healthier and offer their customers healthier foods. They want to get healthier themselves. There's um, the YMCA in Maine is doing farm to Y. They're doing incredible things. So there's all sorts of, to be a lunch leader, you don't necessarily have to think like, oh my gosh, I, I don't know if I want to be like a lunch lady at my kid's school. Mm. Like you can go into, even if you just gain the confidence to cook for yourself and then you can like have the confidence to go knock on the doors of the school and say like, hey, like I know things can be better. They're doing it here. Let's figure out a way to, to create the shift. And that's how I think we're going to create this groundswell uh, from the bottom up where people are going to be um, able to make more change. I mean, we need to, what I want to inspire is passionate, grounded, connected, conscious, critical thinkers that can say, okay, I'm not in California. I'm in Maine. I don't have access to this all year round. What do I have access to? And then they ultimately have a subscription based model where they can tie back into us and have be supported and also connected with each other so if you're if you're in Maine and then there's like two other people in Maine doing the same thing that you didn't know about but all of a sudden you know about them you can have collective buying power you can collaborate you can be getting recipes from people across the country you can be getting inspiration from all sorts of lunch leaders that are doing you know dynamic and amazing things and how do they cross their hurdles and then we have the lunch leader food tube like Jamie Oliver's food tube where you know if you're a sourdough expert or you're a slow roasting expert or you're starting a preschool and you want to tell people how you did it, you can get on the tube on the YouTube or whatever and have, you know, have at it. And as yeah. long as you're in line with the ancestral wisdom and, you know, going back to traditional methods of cooking and preparing foods, then bring it right. It's going to take collaboration. It's like egos get out of the way. I always say to myself, like check your ego at the door and let's do this. It's like for a higher purpose, you know, it's really about, 
you know, just having, changing the world and having fun as Jack Cornfield would say, changing the world and having fun while doing it. So absolutely. And it's, it's so beautiful to think about, like when we talk about grandparents and grandparents, like understand people, we have never had this kind of opportunity in the history of mankind. The reason why nutrition and marketing and all this got out of control is because the information was being siphoned to us. It was being right. funneled to us by these giant companies that, you know, we all watched TGI Friday growing up and saw all the commercials for, you know, Zatarain's rice or whatever we were getting, you know? So now we have this amazing spread of information. It's what Clovis is right now. We're doing it and we can build this, this community, this tribe with Facebook groups and the TV, like you talked about and all that. And then we have the, um, these really conscious brands that come into play too, which I would like to think of myself as a conscious brand. And, um, I also wanted to tell people about the, the condiment crusade. Can you tell yeah. me a bit about that? Yeah. So, um, there are a lot of great people that are doing great things across the country, so including yourself. So um, it's really important to me to highlight those companies. So we have um, like Primal Kitchen and Jovial Brand Foods and Bio Nature and Pure Indian Foods Ghee, um, Redmond's Real Salt, Jackson's Honest. I mean, people that are jumping on board uh, to help out and develop the first school pricing so that other schools can have access to these foods I mean even so my my goal with the condiment crusade because just condiments alone if you can do one thing for your school and switch out the condiments like you've done a lot huge huge a step. lot I mean yeah. and so and even if you're in a, pri a public school it's really difficult because you can't, they won't really say no to commodity foods. So, you know, they're getting free mayonnaise or they're getting free ketchup, or whatever that are filled with soybean oil and high fructose corn syrup. Mm -hmm. So one thing you can do, which is how I started at my public school was to go to the nurse's office and ask for a list of ingredients. So mm -hmm. that's really eye opening. And then when you expose that, it's like, Hmm, I didn't realize all that was in my kid's food. You yeah. know, so I mean, some parents don't really care, but um, when you go to the the um, the head of school or whatever, they can't really deny that like high fructose corn syrup and red dye number forty and all that is is safe. Right. I mean, they can't. They can't you know, promote that. No. So um, so condiments alone are huge. But actually, I went out to eat in Ohio. Um, a few days ago, and this guy who owns the restaurant there has made huge inroads in Santa Barbara with training the staff there and really getting in front of the table. So there are people making headway. Even a, um, a friend of mine who's in Park City, Utah, they've developed a parent um, advocate group called EATS, where they're putting pressure on the public school system, but they've been able to like raise a lot of money and raise awareness. And so you just, that's what I mean about having this, this, you know, using the World Wide web for like good things is that like, there are a lot of people doing amazing things. And I'm just one, you know, little person in Topanga, California, who believes that, you know, I can change the world, but it's just, I think that's what it takes is just people realizing that one person can make a difference and that at this point we need to shout it from the rooftops. And as you said, like the sugar is around every corner. This, my, mm -hmm. my, my phone, yeah. um, this I was just talking about is really challenging for parents. It's like, I didn't sign up for this. I was just yeah. listening to another podcast. I don't sit and listen to podcasts all day, but mm -hmm. um, my children are on the East coast, but um it's really hard. It's like we didn't sign up as parents to have to to be navigating like the food system and and media and phones all day long. Yeah. And that's what I feel like you can spend your whole day doing. So Absolutely. the more we can just raise the awareness and um, and think outside of the box and share ideas and collaborate, the better off we're going to be. Because it is it's super frustrating. Like even even for me, and I'm really conscious about it, but it's like really frustrating. Yeah, it's, it's incredibly difficult. And it is, you know, I'm, I'm tongue in cheek a lot of times and I'm harsh sometimes, but it is, it, I, I do understand that the the obstacles are many. They're really countless at this point of the things that you have to navigate that. And really like your grandparents and great grandparents and generations before can't help you with it because they didn't have to deal with it. No. You know, so what I really like here is what, what you're essentially talking about. It's, it's like a startup company 
or the first person to create a cell phone, right? It's like you're, you're doing proof of concept. So what we have here is proof of concept that you can make this work in a pub, in a private school setting and that we can roll this out and kind of, you know, we have like, like cookie cutter houses, right? They'll put up a new neighborhood and put these cookie cutter houses up. We can do cookie cutter farm to table school lunch programs. And what I think is important is that you're pioneering in the space. And another thing I want to talk about is Dexcom because yeah. that's huge. Like my audience knows that I'm a, a biohacker for the last seven years. I've done all sorts of crazy experiments and I love quantifiable data. So yeah. I want to tell people with what you're working on for Dexcom and, and the implications this will have of like having actual data to bring to school systems. Yeah. So Dexcom is huge. I'll show you guys. Right there. Can everybody see that? Yeah, that's absolutely. Dexcom. I should tell everybody it. I didn't realize I was going to be on video camera until five minutes before we got on. So my <laughs> top doesn't really match the bottom. <laughs> but um, anyway, uh, the Dexcom blood glucose monitor, I think is just like the most wonderful, valuable tool that has come on the market and is available to the public now through a prescription um, through Costco. And it will be, it will be even more so available in the next couple of years, I think. I think through like Google maybe or so. But right now, we're really on the cutting edge with, um, with being able to quantify that this way of eating is not spiking kids' blood glucose levels or... Mm anybody's. I mean, so I, I've been wearing one. Um, my partner's been wearing one for who's Chuck from the head of slow food venture County, very interested in food and been um, a partner in lunch. And he, we, he and I both been wearing them for months and it's just incredible to see how even we are with the way that we eat. So incorporating the healthy fats and, um, proteins and staying away from cr processed carbohydrates, but even having a really nice, beautiful piece of sourdough, I was saying like we make our own sourdough bread that's 48 hours fermented at the school that's um, locally grown grains and freshly milled. And that with, you know, big slab of butter and nice nutrient dense meal, it's, there's no spike. Right. So, but if you're going to sit and eat like four pieces of bread and, and, you know, I'm not saying like go have, a whole loaf of bread or whatever, which is challenging because, you know, it is carbohydrate. So kids can be like, oh, I want more of the bread. So good. Easy to overeat. Yeah. You know, easy to overeat. But it, it, we don't really eliminate anything, but we make sure that everything that we serve is as digestible and nutrient dense as possible. So, yeah. um, but with the Dexcom, we have a, a group of um, adults and their kids who are volunteering to wear the monitors. They're really excited to do it. Some of the staff at Manzanita has really jumped on board because they've like, what's happened is there's this whole shift now with over, you know, two years of eating this way or a year and a half of being exposed to nutrient dense foods and whatnot. They're kind of all like, what is going on? Like, you know, mm. what is bone broth and why do I need to have it? And what are fermented foods and why, oh my gosh, why don't you serve this? And why do you serve that? And so it's, it's opening the conversation and now they're starting to take control of their own health. And that's where yeah. we need you because they're, everyone's like got different layers of disease or whatever that they need to repair. And it's like, you, know, you didn't get this way overnight. So it takes a lot of peeling back of the layers of the onion to get to the, the core issues. But um, with the Dexcom blood glucose monitor, it's like, it's just like the proof is in the pudding. There's no lying. It can't be like, you know, right. write a diet journal for me for a week and you can write whatever you want. Yeah. This is like you'll be seeing it or the person will see it themselves and be like, Hmm, that ice cream really spiked my blood glucose. Yeah. So that, you know, it makes you think twice. And then what we want is to have these chefs, the lunch leaders to be able to wear the, the monitor. So then they understand how a food affects them, them personally. And then B they have an accountability as to how they're feeding the children and their, their community. So it really, you know, makes you stop and think do I really want to give them pasta with I went to a camp the other day and I happened to be lunchtime and I was just like oh my god mm. chicken nuggets rice potatoes pasta with a little cheese on top iceberg lettuce Jeez. grapes and grapes yeah. I was just like holy moly so if I was a chef that was serving that and I were to eat that and then see what that did to my blood glucose, I would have a hard time serving that to children. 
Yeah, it'd be off the charts. That, you know, you're basically every day that we that we that we keep their blood glucose stable, we're keeping them another day from entering the medical system or a chronic disease. Yes, and there's so. the disconnect there. You give yourself a, an actual visual. You get to see that spike. And what I love about like our partnership and coming together here is that I've taken the approach because I have to of a trickle down effect of teach the parents about proper nutrition and hope that it trickles into their household and that they'll feed their kids properly. You have done this whole reverse thing that I didn't even know what was possible, which is like a, a trickle up effect from the children yeah. getting healthier lunches and it's changing the household. The parents are like, wait a minute, I'm seeing a significant change in my child. And that's one thing that I want to outline here. If, if, even if somebody doesn't get involved with the lunch program or doesn't change their own lunch program or any of these things, what I want you to understand if you have kids is that the low hanging fruit here is nutrition. So yes, we can do quantifiable data like blood glucose levels with the Dexcom, but the other quantifiable data is behavioral problems, ADD, ADHD, depression, kids who are on the spectrum, like you name it. I am yet and I'm not claiming this is a cure-all, right? Some people are have unique situations. Like my niece, Savannah, is still 100% vegetative. She's five years old. She's not going to have a normal life. It doesn't matter what we feed her, right? But for most kids, nutrition is the low-hanging fruit. And I am yet to see most common issues that don't see significant improvement once the nutrition is cleaned up. So when we look at things like detention, test scores, behavioral problems, like you know, my dad goes and visits my nephew at his school and he's like, every three minutes, a teacher is having to take a child aside and sit him in the corner because they're having a blowout tantrum. And it's like, we take these innocent little kids and their morning starts with a bowl of cinnamon toast crunch soaked with feedlot milk from sick animals. And then, so we pump them full of sugar, their blood glucose spikes off the charts. Then we sit them in an uncomfortable desk and tell them to be quiet and behave. And then when they don't behave, they get in trouble or worse, they end up on medication. Yeah. You know, and it's just, this is, this is insane at this point, you know, and this is the low hanging fruit. So if you take nothing else away from this podcast, just know that there are other quantifiable means of, of proving what this does for little kids. It's really important, you know? Yeah. Well, and Dr. Paul, who's the head of um, the Manzanita school where I'm the lunch lady, he said, you know, some of the kids will come in with a diagnosis of, ADHD and within like a couple weeks of school starting he's and it's a nature-based school so they're out on the land twice a week they're they're always out on the land they eat on out you know under the trees he doesn't know who those kids are anymore wow so just reconnecting I mean that's I think the future is people are really going to see more about nature connection and not being so um you know, around this all the time and screens and lighting and, you know, inside, it's like just grounding and being really like, we've just become so disconnected to, to everything. I mean, so there was an example when we went on the camping trip, like three years ago. So before I was the lunch lady, there was like breakfast being served and there was cereal and somebody pulled out like Fritos and dip and, um, and I was just like, what is going on? You know, my nature, my nature school, like, what are they doing? And then Dr. Paul stood up and he's like, you know, we're up by like, you know, up in Northern California. It was just like, look at these redwoods. This is so incredible. Like at the base of every redwood, billions of microbes that keep them alive. And, and I was just like, you are a redwood. Like you're yeah. no different. We're no different than anything in nature. We're really like the most miraculous example of nature. And so the sooner we, like if you could unzip us and say like, holy Moses, like what is going on every day to just keep me alive and blinking and moving yeah. and thinking it's like, you know, so the more you connect to what's really going on around us, it's so miraculous that you, you can't help but kind of become more connected to the whole big picture as a whole and that that involves our food system so um it's really i think the nature connection and is just really going to start to come in more and more because we're just we've gotten so removed from it yeah i think so too there's a lot of movements these these nature schools and then there's uh that really famous uh, ted talk with that like 12 year old kid he did the unschool, oh, the unschool ted yeah, talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was fantastic 
adorable. And, yeah. and then when you talk about the microbes and everything, I mean, you're absolutely right. You share 99% of your DNA with that redwood. It really comes down to that. So yes. like I did an AMA way back when I started Clovis. It was AMA number nine that was called Feeding Your Children and Their Gut Bugs. And that's what all this is, this is about, this connection to nature and these, or this over-sanitized life that we live. So a couple of resources I just want to throw out to people is one, there's this horrific article called, the, I believe it's called The Drugging of the American Boy. And that's when we get to the evil and the marketing stuff. And you have to understand that like, it's literally a funnel, like people who are like giving their kid cereal and milk and then sending them to school and sitting them in a, in a uncomfortable chair at a public school and telling them to sit down and shut up and behave themselves. Like you're literally taking every step possible to put your kid on medication, to get your kid into the healthcare system very, very young. And it goes through the statistics of kids being put on drugs and why it's very normal behavior. They just have a lot of energy. They wanna go outside and play. Their blood glucose is spiked, you know? So it's really this sick thing that gets kids involved in the medical industry, conventional medicine, from a very young age. And they'll probably be on medication for the rest of their life. And the other, uh, re so that article, The Drugging the American Boy, the other resource I wanna give is Juliet Starrett who I had on my podcast and she runs Stand Up Kids where they put stand-up desks in schools and uh, Clovis flips a full classroom every year. I think if you want to get involved, it's $5,000 will flip an entire classroom to stand-up desks. And they're doing this in public schools as well, uh, I believe, which is really, really crazy. So that's awesome. And then uh, Brain Maker by Dr. Mark Hyman, a fantastic book talking about the gut microbiome and the importance of it for kids and stuff like that. So you can start there. That's a lot of resources, but I'll put all this in the show notes and everything. But so if you had to give people steps, um, I, I guess say right now, because obviously um, we're going to talk about how people can get involved directly with you, directly with Manzanito, with your program and all that. But if people were just, I guess on a practical level, people who feel stuck, because there's a lot of parents I know that feel stuck, like some that one parent was telling me that their school has a mandatory milk program, you have to pay in advance, and they give your kid feedlot milk. And if you want to opt out of the program, you need a letter from a doctor. Like it's just getting well, crazy. In Massachusetts, they said whole milk was illegal to sell, but you could sell strawberry and chocolate. Yeah. Right? yeah. Like, what? what? <laughs> it's like absolutely it's insane. Bad. So if you could think well, of practical steps, steps like on a public school level, is there anything you can think of like, you know, just a few pieces of advice that people can try? Obviously you talked about at, to everybody go to school, go to the nurse, ask yeah. for ingredients, start there. Yeah. Is there anything else? Yeah. And then, um, I mean, what I did was, you know, a lot of schools now have a wellness committee or they're all supposed to have a wellness committee, I think. So we kind of um, formed the wellness committee and then it was so a group of parents, you know, you're stronger in numbers. So if you get people that are, that are, you know, of like mind and fit, can figure out and have the energy to, to change things, um, I feel like you really have to get the school on board because if they're not on board, I feel feel like you just get kind of placated and just, you know, it's like band-aid here, band-aid there. And then it's just really frustrating. So, um, but this is where we want to have proof of concept so that people can say, this is possible. Mm. Like kids are not like dropping dead from eating whole foods, like, <laughs> you know, and like this is going on. There are like one in two children will have a chronic disease or, you know, there's a lot of ADHD in our school. Or there's a lot of um, you know, so just, I think really getting frank with the heads of school and the superintendents and just saying, you know, there's, it's undeniable, it's undeniable. So it's really that school making it a priority because if yeah. they want to make it a priority, they can do wonders. Cause if Santa Barbara can do it, I mean, you know, they're doing it up in, in, um, Oakland and, um, in Berkeley area, but you know, they've raised a lot of money. So, you know, when I looked at those programs, it was like millions of dollars being raised. And I was just like, for the average person who looks at that, it's super overwhelming. Like, how am I going to raise money? How am I going to do this? And that's why I feel like, um, the lunch leader, training academy or training lunch leaders is something that's like doable. So if you have, or you say to your superintendent, Hey, can we send our lunch ladies to the lunch leader training academy? So then they know how to like scratch the surface and find what's available locally. They're going to have menus to, um, you know, shoot from, and they're going to have a connection with people across the country who are doing great things. And, you know, it's like, I think that's, really how they can get hopeful and and if they have kitchens i mean in massachusetts they just built three 
brand new elementary schools and didn't put anything but reheating kitchens wow. in like, you know, five years ago. I'm like, what? Wow. That's you know, crazy. so it's like, there are a lot of hurdles, but if you get creative and you get the people that are cooking the food to really understand that, you know, maybe there are steps they can take from just getting rid of the condiments to, you know, making two meals from scratch or, um, you know, removing sugar from mm. the daily things or offering, you know, not offering the milks. But I, I understand it's, it's no easy feat, but no, I think, definitely not. You know, but getting the, getting the superintendent on board and the head of school on board and really just showing that's why if we can show this, um, you know, if it's quantifiable scientific evidence that this way of eating is not spiking blood sugars, then you show kids that are eating a regular standard school lunch that are spiking their blood sugars every day, all day. Yeah. How can they deny that? Yeah. And in an ideal world, I would love to see in the future, uh, you know, if, if the government got behind it or some big organizations with some real money to actually do this Dexcom thing in multiple schools, public school systems with like low test scores and behavioral problems versus farm to table programs and just actually track the blood glucose and compare it to things like test scores and detention and all these problems would be yeah. be really you amazing. So the kids don't even really know, like they don't have to be looking at their, because you don't want to create some psychological like, oh my God, I can't eat that. Or I can never have ice cream again in my life. You know, it's right, like, right. So, but you can create it so they don't even know, depending on their age, you know, if they're in high school, like one girl in our, who's a senior in high school said to me a couple months ago, like, wow, like I really understand now how sugar affects my body. She said, yes. it makes me feel terrible. And I was like, ah, hallelujah. She's like, it makes me feel terrible. So she's like, when I'm faced now with a decision to like have a piece of birthday cake or whatever, she said, I might have it but I know the, you know, ramifications, but yes. it's my choice, but at least now she's empowered with that information. Absolutely. So, Understanding you know, the consequences. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what you want is we want to create that in the kids too. So parents can get in, start with your snack program. I mean, I taught in Massachusetts an after school cooking class and it's really, it's just passionate leaders that we need. And we want young, like I want young, um, you know, I have a lot of like, cool young people in my kitchen that are like, like, you know, inspiring for these kids to see like, Hey, he's like ripped and taking care of himself. And yeah. I want to be like that, you know? So it's like, we need those role models, right? Those positive role models that are demonstrating for our kids. So even if they can get, you know, switch out or incorporate more lunch leaders that understand the power of this. Yeah. And one other analogy that I wanted to um, give was that the same day that Dr. Paul stood up about the Redwoods, he was like, you know, I want everybody to go around this beautiful campsite and pick up all the micro trash so that we leave this place exactly as we found it. So any teeny tiny bits of micro trash. And so if you think of like your body, like, you know, if we had left our micro trash, probably the next people in wouldn't have really noticed it. Mm -hmm. But if everybody continues to leave their micro trash, it's going to build up and you're going to start to notice it. Yeah. Same way with disease, right? If you clean up from the beginning, you're not going to build up the micro trash. But if yes. you just keep thinking that they're just kicking it down the road, it's going to build up and it's going to hit you over the head. And that's, that's what we want to avoid is like, you don't want that frying pan to the head where then all of a sudden you're faced with really difficult choices. Like if you have a cancer diagnosis or something really serious, it's like, life-changing yeah Not an instant no yeah. one wants that you know and so then it's like just i can't stress enough the power of food as medicine and that's your first it's the first thing that you can you know and it's accessible to everybody and just scratch the surface ask questions i know not everybody has access to beautiful farmers markets like i do mm. so I'm, i really do understand that but um that's where I really like the work of, uh, you know, our, our friend Diana Rogers too, you know, cause yeah. she's big on that. She's like, listen, if you can't get grass fed beef, eat the grain fed beef, you're going to be okay. It's better than Doritos. <laughs> you know, it's like you have to make do with, with what's available right. in the area. So speaking yeah. of, of making do with what's available, I do want to touch on, uh, cause I know I'm going to keep you all day here, but, <laughs> um, the, the intensive that you're doing, I do want to talk about that. So if somebody is involved 
in a private school and they may have more freedom, more flexibility, maybe they're a little closer to the administrators on a personal level, just more options. What is this event that you're starting? Well, we're doing a full on um, week long immersion program here in Topanga and in Malibu. So we, um, everyone's staying together at a beautiful retreat in Topanga and we'll go to Malibu to a farm with a beautiful kitchen for cooking classes. Um, and it's really going to uh, basically give full on instruction on how you can um, change your school lunch program, not only change your school lunch program, but just change your habits and your mindset and your thinking about how you can um, step into that role as a leader in your community, no matter you know what you're trying to do, but certainly with schools and then understanding the power of feeding the children this way and your accountability towards towards feeding. So even if you're wanting to just have that confidence, you can still come, but um, but we're going to be going over like, you know, how you scale up and how, what types of foods we're serving, what are the menus we're doing. Um, we have a woman coming in to help who's uh, helping people be profitable and setting up those spreadsheets because a lot of people who do farm to table like end up losing money because they're not quite mm -hmm. you know they're just like doing the best that they can do and i'm I'm guilty of that too sometimes it's just like oh my gosh we have to have this and so it's like how do you put it all into you know so that you can't trick yourself into thinking that you're going to be profitable it's like right there and then you can know like okay we're we're not making money where are we gonna figure out how because some meals are more expensive than others you know like we might sure. spend more money on a fish day because it's like local and wild and beautiful but then we realize like okay in that week we have to scale back with something a less expensive meal so we have um we have that we have trip to the farmer's market so we teach the questions that you need to ask your farmers how do you interact with them so many farmers when they hear that this is about the children jump on board they mm. all have um, you know, most often have surplus and are happy to give deals, sharpen their pencils. A lot of them, it's like, you know, we're a no waste kitchen. We have a trash can that's like one foot high and we serve over a hundred people. Wow. So you know, we really are recycling and composting and so we'll teach about no waste, but also the farmers, like a lot of them have a ton of lettuce or zucchini that they can't sell again, that they're happy to to donate or to give a really good price on. So we'll do that. We'll go to Belcampo where we'll have lunch and then they also will be introduced to um, the butcher shop where they'll see how to use the whole animal and really honor the animal and buying proper animals and why you want to do that and then how you use the different cuts of meat and um, slow roast things or things that are less expensive and how you get creative with that. So I mean even Sally Fallon from the Weston Price Foundation came and I was making beans and I had a pig's ear in the beans. I mean, I had a vegetarian option too, but she was just sure. like, even just doing that alone <laughs> is changing these kids, you know, health, just that, just bone broth or just that gelatin getting into them. Um, but you know, it's, some people might be like, what a pig's ear, like that's yeah. crazy. But it's like, those are the things where you can get really creative and, and, um, and get really, deep nutrition into wow. kids with not a lot of extra expense. So, and then we have people like you coming out. Um, so I always say like, I think of Clovis as like, we need you as like, we need to revamp the lunch lady. Then we now need to revamp the school nurse because yes. it's like everyone's like, you know, has something and they don't know how to deal with it. So we need somebody like you that can um, hold their hand and really like dive in deep to what's actually going on and how to start, you know, getting better. So you'll be there. Um, organic Pastures will be there. Mark McAfee from Organic Pastures, so he can talk about raw dairy and the benefits of raw dairy. Not everybody will have that, but at least you'll understand what it is to have skim, pasteurized, homogenized, yeah, milk, chocolate, what that means, or whatever. Yeah, what that means. Um, and so uh, I'm trying to think of what else, but it'll be it'll be amazing. And so and, and it will just be the beginning of you know something great where we're you know, connecting people across the country who can start this movement. It really is a movement. It's amazing. So, what are the dates on the event? August 4th through 10th. Okay. And we're going to put that in the show notes and everything. We'll give the event link yeah, and everything. So if you want to grab yeah, a ticket to that. Thing is, um, we also have a, a one-sheeter that's a um, 
and ask for people because I know it's it can be cost prohibitive for some people that are really passionate about doing great things, but they're like, oh, I just can't afford that. So there are a lot of people that are super generous and have deeper pockets or have more disposable income that might be happy to sponsor others. Right. So that's something that I feel like is a really beautiful angel investment or we have a nonprofit so that people can um, – can donate right into that and be tax deductible. So if you know somebody that you want to send, you know, do it. Yeah. Yeah. So if you, you know, if you have that capability, that's a really great gift to be able to send or you can raise money. You know, a couple people might be able to do it for one person. So yeah, I love the way that you set that up. And that's, that's why Clovis was able to be involved so heavily in this is because you have that, that 501 C three set up yeah. and everything, which is just it's been amazing. So, and because of you guys are writing the, the, you know, the model so that it can be scaled up and recreated across the country and really yeah. and doing this Dexcom study. So we're so thankful to you guys. It's amazing. Well, I am honored to be a part of it. That's like the least, I, I wish that I was, you know, the size of Primal Kitchen so I could just like fund everything that you needed to do. Just be like, They're going to be, there. They'll be yeah. there. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. So for well, people, people that want to get involved though, like even at the, the smallest level, just share this podcast. Like you never know, just putting this on your Facebook wall, there might be some other parent who yeah. has deeper pockets and it goes to the same school system that you do or their kids in school with your kid. And next thing you know, your lunch lady is sponsored and going to this event and hanging out with Hillary and I, you know? Yeah, it's going to be, it's, it's, it's super cool opportunity and Primal will be there, I think too. Oh, um, awesome. I'm meeting with them this week, so hopefully they'll be there. And, and that's what we'll do is so on the, the last day, the lunch leaders will be set up with accounts or at least the relationships with those national, regional brands that they can um, and, you know, then use within their school system. So wow. it's really about, you know, alleviating that. In the beginning, we were making all of our own mayonnaise and stuff, and it's just it does get – cost prohibitive and it's a lot of time and labor and so if you can know that you have a manager that you trust it's huge yeah that's you a know? game changer no. yeah yeah okay so on a on a, a personal level before as we wrap this thing up how can people uh talk to you how can do you want people to get in touch with you directly let's talk about social media or the best way to get in touch with you yeah. I mean, so again, once I'm like Primal Kitchen, then I'll have all this big website and all this stuff where people can find <laughs> me. But <laughs> right now it's Live Yum Yum, L-I-V-E-Y-U-M-Y-U-M is my um, Instagram. And actually, it's so funny. It was like two or three years ago, Primal. I think it was Mark himself that was like, let me, I, I was like, what does this at sign mean? I mean, I had no idea. <laughs> And so they kind of walked me through that. And so that's where I really where I am. So people can message me directly on that. You can feel free. I mean, Hillary H. Boynton at Gmail. We can maybe put a link to my, Absolutely. my email. Um, but we've been jumping on phone calls with people all week or uh, for the past two or three weeks since we launched this. And it's just super fascinating to see the types of people that want to make a shift. I mean, one woman just yesterday was like wanting to dive into the hospital. She's had cancer and she can't get over the crap that's in the hospitals. Yeah. So, you know, there's so much opportunity and we're really happy. We understand this is like a big decision and, um, and sometimes needs some talking through to figure out really how this can be really helpful for you. So we're happy to jump on a phone call. I mean, we with Chuck from Slow Food, Ventura County and, um, and, and myself. So awesome. To anybody listening, I highly recommend this because I take phone calls with Hillary and Chuck quite often. And it's like the most inspiring time ever. Like the three of us just like, <laughs> we're going to change the whole world. And there's like so <laughs> much energy and like Chuck is an amazing human being. And it's just, so I highly recommend you guys take advantage of this, get in touch with Hillary, particularly if you really think this is something you could do in your local school system make the phone calls happen. And um, this is just the first of many with this podcast too. I would love to have you come on and do maybe do like a live Q and a with my audience and Facebook yeah. live or something. We could have Chuck there. They can ask you questions directly and really just yeah. try to keep this momentum going and push this thing as, as yeah. hard as we can. So and we're so passionate. He texted me like right before he's like drink decaf. I'm like, well, I already drank regular, but we're like, we come across as like, you know, we're just, talking a mile a minute because it's like it's we're so passionate I feel like it's a calling I mean you you maybe yes. feel that way too it's like I just feel it in my on every in every cell like yeah. on a cellular level I feel like this is the right thing to do 
And so, um, you know, we're just really crazy, passionate people. So if you want to jump on board with the good crazies, you know, together we can <laughs> together we can change so, the I do good crazy it sounds like hokey but it's so true i mean i think it just takes passion you know it just takes yeah. that you know it's it's 100 percent true and I, I think you know my audience is used to this at this point i constantly talk about the universe and you, you know i you know before we recorded we talked about our past and what we went through and then my niece savannah the situation she's in and your kids with the problems that they've had and it's like there's always a silver lining. And I, I truly believe, I mean, I think that that both you and I and the roles that we currently play in the world are, are doing what we were put here to do. Yeah. And I would also go as far as to say that there are people listening to this podcast right now who need to be in similar roles. That's what they were put here to do. And they just don't know it yet. And yeah. maybe this podcast is is that door opening for them. I truly believe that. I think sometimes we're hit over the head because we are change makers and then it's like you yes. have to have that lesson to be able to then talk about it and mm -hmm. it's let's face it it's all i think it's all storytelling so i think what resonates with people now there's so much confusion out there that when you hear a mama talk straight from the heart saying like this healed my child it's undeniable right and right. you're going to listen to that mama versus all the 50 million news stories that are scaring them but jesus out of you and you don't know what to believe anymore or your doctors yeah so um, yeah, it's about the storytelling. So you can go, speaking of that, which we always say we dinosaurs, but Rita and I from my kitchen, we've been, thanks to your encouragement, been recording live in the kitchen. So if you go back to our highlights, you can go see like hours of time in the kitchen for the last month of school. So you can get an idea of what a day in the life of a lunch lady is. And it's like a reality show because yes. literally the clock strikes. 12 30 and it's like knives down hands up food has to go out it's yep. like there's no messing around these are 100 people that are ready to eat yeah so you know it's it's like on the fly and it's you know we're trying to give as much information and um resources as possible to people and make it fun and exciting so if anyone you know once we're a little bit bigger and we can figure out we need a millennial we need a little 25 year old to come <laughs> tell us how to do it all or or you maybe because you're figuring yeah. it out but i'm figuring it so, out but if somebody wants to watch, they can go to the highlights and we'll be filming again soon. Actually, Wednesday, I think we'll be filming some. Beautiful. Yeah, they're, they're super fun to watch. So everybody go to Instagram at Live Yum Yum and watch those Instagram stories. It's, it's amazing. So we can wrap on that. The good crazies changing the world. The and, I, yeah, and I just want to say, like, obviously at, at Clovis, I talk a lot. I use, always use this term superhuman. Like, I don't want you to be normal. I want you to be a superhuman. And Hillary, you are just a shining example of a real life superhero. So I just want to say thank yeah. you for being here. Thank you for all the work that you do. You're just a beautiful human and it's, it's beautiful to watch. And thank you for letting me be a part of it. I appreciate it. Oh, well, thank you so much. I really appreciate all you do and, um, you know, together, let's do it better together, right? Better together. 100%.